you might find that some arguments are a little more difficult to translate than others. In exercise 6.4 of your book, Roman numeral 1, let's look at number 7, for example. It says Einstein won the Nobel Prize either for explaining the photoelectric effect or for the special theory of relativity. But he did win the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect, therefore Einstein did not win the Nobel Prize for the special theory of relativity. Now, the thing that we must immediately recognize is that this either or is there. Um, we also notice that there's a therefore showing where the conclusion is, and we also see a not. So we want to look at how this ends up. So let's say I'm very confused and I don't know how to start this translation. I want to say Einstein won the Nobel Prize, but it looks like there's more to that particular proposition. That's because what this statement really is, is not a simple proposition. It's actually a compound proposition. It's two propositions that looks like one. So it really says Einstein, or actually, really, it says either Einstein won the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect, or Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the special theory of relativity. So that Einstein won the Nobel Prize is important. We would translate this as Einstein won the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect. So we'll say either um, P, because either he won it for explaining the photoelectric effect, or Einstein won the Nobel Prize for the special theory of relativity. So I'm going to use R for relativity. My second premise says, but he did win the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect. So we're going to say, well, but okay, he did win. So that's the same as P. Einstein won the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect. So my second premise ends up just being P. Einstein won the Nobel Prize for explaining the photoelectric effect. Therefore, Einstein did not win the Nobel Prize for the special theory of relativity. So it would be not R in the conclusion. My either or ends up being a wedge. So my standard form is P or R, P, therefore not R. standard form. And if I quickly work out a truth table for this argument, it would look like this. P or R, one slash, P, double slash, not R. I've got, again, an example with only two letters. So my number of lines is four. It often happens with arguments. Um, that there are shorter truth tables to be worked out. I know then that I've got two trues and two falses in my first letter from the left and one true and one false for my second letter. I carry those over. Everywhere there's a P in this example, there will be true, true, false, false. Everywhere there's an R, true, false, true, false. Again, I'm going to work the tilde first because it's the easiest thing to do and it gets me the answer for my conclusion. So that'll be false, true, false, true, because again, I'm just doing the opposite of what R is. I'm negating R. So this is my answer for the conclusion. This is already my answer for the second premise. It's just there. There's no work to be done. It's just one letter. Um, or additional work to be done. And we remember that the wedge, the rule for the wedge is that it's only false if they're both false. That's here, the rest are true. And I very quickly again, get my answer for the first premise. So now I want to use the line test to look at line one and line three to determine whether or not these lines that have false 
conclusions also have all true premises. And I do find that on the very first line. Here's a false conclusion and all true premises. So there's one here, or I'll put an X. Um, if it failed also on line three, I would have listed all the lines that it failed on, lines one and three, but it just fails on one line in this example. So I would say this is an invalid argument fails on line one. And you can see they've actually given you that answer in the back of the book, but the only thing they've given you is that it's invalid and what line um, upon which it fails. So let's look at a second example that might be difficult to translate, focusing again on translation in this video. Another example that might be difficult in those exercises is number nine. It says, either the USS Arizona or the USS Missouri, those are names of ships, was not sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. Therefore, it is not the case that either the USS Arizona or the USS Missouri was sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. So this one's a little more complicated because it involves just a little bit more translation and a set of parentheses, nothing too terrible. So we've got either or, then we've got therefore, we have it is not the case that, we know that that translates something, then we have another either or. So let's look at what we've got. We've again got something very similar to the Einstein example. We've got either the USS Arizona or the USS Missouri was not sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. So we've missed that not as well, was not sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. What this really says is either the US Air, USS Arizona was not sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor or the USS Missouri was not sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. But people don't normally speak that way. We tend to be a little bit more concise with our language, so that's taken into account here. So what we can say is either the USS Arizona was not sunk, or the USS Missouri was not sunk. So we know that that not applies to both the USS Arizona and the USS Missouri. Then we've got this, it is not the case that, and we know that there's gonna be a tilde there. And we know also that the either or, even though there's no or, it is, or the or is here, we're gonna use the wedge for either or. That's how our translation will go. Then again, we've got either the USS Arizona or the USS Missouri was sunk in the attack on Pearl Harbor. So we can say was sunk A and was sunk M. So a preliminary way to write this out would be either not A, either the USS Arizona was not sunk or the USS Missouri was not sunk, therefore it is not the case that either the USS Arizona or the USS Missouri was sunk in the attack in, on Pearl Harbor. And that then becomes, if we add our operators, either A or not A or not M would be not a wedge not M. Therefore, it is not the case that either A or M. But because we want, to, because the it is not the case that affects what's directly after it, we know that there's a set of parentheses here. And you've seen that before in previous exercises. So that's how you would translate it. Um, very quickly, you would. If you only have one premise, you would put two slashes between it and the conclusion, not A or M. They look very similar, but again, you don't distribute the tilde. You just work it out as it is. So L equals two to the N. Again, we're left with just four lines because we've got two letters. So we can do that quickly. One, two, three, and four. Um, and then we've got again, true, true, false, false. We can carry that over to the other A, 
You want to think about it differently. Then we've got true, false, true, false under the M. We work out each premise and the conclusion as if they're separate. So what I want to do here is I want to treat this not A as if it's one whole entity and this not M as if it's one entity. So I want to say false, false, true, true, done with that. False, true, false, true, done with this. My or tells me or my wedge tells me they're only false if they're both false. There's one here. The rest are true. I'm done with this line and this line, and here's the answer for my first, or for my only premise. Then here, I'm going to use the wedge first and work what's in the parentheses and then apply the tilde. Never forget that tilde when it's at the beginning of something. It's always applied last in that case. So the again, it's only false if they're both false. But again, we have to apply the tilde, so the answer here will be false, 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 true. So again, I'm going to look for a line in which I've got a false conclusion. Here I've got a false conclusion on 1, 2, and 3. But do I have a true premise? No, that one's okay. Here I've got one. And on line 3 also, I've got one. So I would say this is invalid, fails on lines two and three.